Hey everybody, hope you're having a good evening. Kind of a slow weekend stock-wise with the U.S. market being closed for three days. We've had a lot of sideways trading in AMC lately, and if you take a look at this last week, a bit of a dip. Nothing dramatic, scary, probably healthy price correction, but still red days and red weeks are hard. So let's take a look out, zoom out, when in doubt, zoom out, as all the pros say. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, never financial advice, but hopefully a little bit of education and entertainment. So when we take a look at our month chart and we see where we've come and, and where we are, we're pretty healthy, right? We went up into the 70s and then we've been down in the 60s pretty much ever since. Um, the high 50s, low 60s, uh, we're down in the 50s right now. But if you take a look at this line here, this channel is 5196, we're still above that and we're doing well so um you know take it for what it's worth we have a period of consolidation we've we've risen and we've consolidated and now we're building strength for that boom rocket up so hopefully to come let's take a look at some numbers though this is what i've been thinking about a lot lately and i want to share this with you and see if it makes sense if it doesn't drop me a comment and we can talk about it um, so taking a look at our outstanding shares, we have about 502 million outstanding shares. And according to this um, guru focus, but it's, it's consistent in other places, um, 24 to 25% of that is institutional. Adam Aaron and AMC have said that we're over 80% for retail. So that's 105%, um, not including the insider shares that are out there. So already there's some math that doesn't quite add up, right? We have that extra 5% somewhere in there um, that we can't confirm. Over 80% to me means it could be 82, 83, 84, who knows? But something over 80. So there are 5, 10% of outstanding shares right now that aren't really, really. So, but let's go with these numbers right now. And we look at 502 uh, million outstanding shares. Of that, we have about 18% um, that have reported short interest in. So that's about 90 million shares. Um, let's round it up and say it's 100 million. You know, it could be 70, it could be 100. Let's just go with 100 because that's easy math. Okay, so we have about 400 million shares that are owned, not shorted, and we have about 100 million that are shorted. So those shares have to come from somewhere, right? So when we look at, again, AMC, let's see if I can get over here. Things are, of course, going to go slow for me tonight. There we go. And we see that there's that more than 80% of AMC shares are held by retail investors. Um, so we have that in there. It's pretty recent, right, in June. And then we're going to take a look at our failures to deliver in a minute here. So when we're looking at that 100 million shore, shares shorted, um, or at least borrowed, well, what you else you would want to borrow them for, I don't know. We plan to shorten you don't uh, over and over again. It's pretty indecisive. So let's assume most of them are shorted. They have to be borrowed from someone. We have institutional investors owning over 100 million shares, so they could be buying them for their ETFs and then just lending them out to hedge funds to short. And so all of those shorted shares aren't from apes, they're from the institutional investors. That's a possibility, right? And if that's the case, then as soon as they want them back, that's when the margin calls start to happen. So we'll see if that actually happens or not. But if that's starting to happen, if shares are hard to find, this is where fails to deliver come in. So again, apologies, this data is, well, I don't know if it's my apology or the SEC's, but this data is always two weeks behind and ends up being almost a month behind uh, by the time we actually get the new data. So you see this goes to about the middle of June. So, but what you do see is when the fails to deliver go up, so does the price. So from here, it went from $2 to about $20, about 10 times the, the price increase. So about a thousand percent based on this level of fails to deliver. If we look over here at this level of fails to deliver about 5.4 million, um, this is where we went up to over $60 a share. So just that little bit, that little little bump of fails to deliver, it I don't know if it caused it, but they're connected. So put this into perspective. So if the price is going high, it's really a lot of FOMO buying, it's in demand, it's hard to get shares. 
But the market makers, their job is to keep selling them anyway. And so they're, that's why they're allowed to make it short. They could sell the shares they don't really have yet um, with the assumption they'll get them soon. And so they're going to sell, right? They're gonna, making money. They're, they're going to make money off that spread. And so they're selling the shares even if they don't have them. And so that's why in a time of really high demand, we can get a lot of fails to deliver. On the flip side of that, um, if there's a lot of fails to deliver, and remember, these are two days behind. So these failures to deliver are actually from over here, probably right around here. Um, that's where they came from. So you would think we should have seen another big spike after this one, but we don't. It actually went down. So it's not really adding up, right? So some questions to be answered there. You look at, and sorry, before I keep going to GameStop, I guess. So right now we're on the threshold list, AMC. There's only two stocks that are currently on it as of the last date that the New York Stock Exchange is open. If I can get on it here, we have the Beachbody Company and we have AMC. And so this means that there's been consecutive days of failures to deliver. So, and it had to be a significant amount. So you would think this is going to start showing up. When we get the new data, we're going to see some pretty big spikes. But then the question remains, why haven't we seen a big spike in price like we do here, like we did here 10 times? We have five times a 5x price increase from this bump. So we've seen these big price increases with failures to deliver before, but now we're on the threshold list and we're not seeing it. So there's something going on. There's something kind of fishy, right? Uh, if anyone has any ideas, please drop a comment. Let's figure this out. Look at, at GameStop. Just take a quick look here at GameStop if I can. So, and if we look at GameStop's uh, failures to deliver, you see, of course, the January squeeze the failures to deliver went really high here, and then the price jacked up even higher, right? So there seems to be a connection. Failures to deliver uh, get up there. They're two days behind, and then we see a price increase as perhaps there's margin calls because they fail, failed to deliver. They're, they're people should give us our shares, and they're forced to buy. Um, but then again, it's also FOMO buying. So a lot of volatility in there. So why then with this threshold list are the AMC failures to deliver not high? Well, probably they are, but we're two, three weeks behind uh, of where that is. This should be probably in this area where those FTDs are going up. So it, let's assume the FTDs are up here. They're, they're spiked up. Why then have we not seen that price increase? And this is where we're saying there might be a lot more market manipulation. Maybe this is just the tip of the iceberg and we're seeing the failures to deliver the threshold list. And underneath that, there's a lot of naked short selling. And now hedge funds are crushing it. They're just doubling down, tripling down, throwing as many naked shares as they can, hitting the option chains, lots of puts, uh, bonds, whatever they can do to drop that price because they know they're gonna have to buy them back because of this threshold list. And so they're trying to crush the price as much as they can before they do. So maybe it's still to come, hopefully. We'll find out, I guess. So if you look at the other stock on the threshold list, it's kind of a similar story. Its price didn't go up either, right? Like, so it seemed like it, it was in really high demand, um, but then where is that price increase? If we zoom out a bit though, there's our high demand, right? And so they had a whole bunch of failures to deliver. It became really popular and they just kept selling it even though they didn't have it. And so they have the failure to delivers over here, right? So they're delayed. They always have that three days where they have to fulfill their contracts and they then they fail and then we get the failure to deliver data. So it's a bit behind, but now I guess for this company as well as us, we'll see if there's another lag and we're going to get a big price jump, hopefully. So looking at 100 million shares sold short, right? And, or at least borrowed. We don't know they're sold short, but most of them probably are. They're shorting. We have to assume that apes aren't willingly giving their shares to be shorted, to borrow. But at the same time, your broker can lend those out, especially if they're bought on margin. If you have them in a Roth IRA or a TFSA or in a cash account of some kind, they are not supposed to be able to do that. It doesn't say they don't, but they're not supposed to. They're your shares. 
But if they're bought on margin and you still owe the money on margin, you don't really own anything in your account and they can lend them. So there's potentially, you know, hundreds of millions of shares they can lend out uh, legitimately. So if you have the option of turning off share lending, I'm not a financial advisor, but I kind of think it would defeat the purpose if you're letting your shares be shorted out to drop the price of something you want to go up. Um, but also, I really, really just recommend taking a look at where you're at, seeing if you can switch out of margin, get them to a cash account if possible, so that that's impossible. That's a lot of possibles. A anyway, um, that's the 100 million shares. So in theory, with the volume we have hundreds of millions a day, it would take a few hours to cover all the shorts if I had to buy them back. So talking about a prolonged short squeeze of three, four, five days, if there's no naked shorting, then we know 100 million shares could be bought back relatively quickly simply by institutional investors if that's who they borrow them from. Uh, will they or not? It depends if they're sided with those shorters or they're against them and want to see them suffer and they hold out for higher and higher prices. You know, the whales are important in this scenario. Now, but is there naked shorting? We all think there is. We're sure there are. But then when AMC came out and put out there's 502 million shares outstanding or 501, 780, um, it seems like there isn't. And we're confused because right away, think about all those borrowed shares. If there's 80 million or 100 million, that should be an extra 20%. Shouldn't there be then 600 million, the 500 million we have plus the 100 million that were lent out and shorted so that there's extra shares, rehypothecated shares, that's not accounted for. That alone makes me suspicious. So just looking at those numbers, they're just too normal. And with everything we're seeing, we know they have other strategies to push the price down for sure. But the fact that there's so many borrowed shares, they're not showing up in the vote counts, um, right? The original owner still has voting rights. If a new owner buys it, from a short sale, they have voting rights, they're real shares as far as they're concerned, but they didn't show up in the numbers. So is that AMC knowing something they're not sharing or can't? Is that some other duplicitous measure? Are the brokers in on this and can't be trusted with the numbers they're giving AMC? Tinfoil hat, I was gonna wear some tinfoil, I didn't because that's very conspiracy theory-ish, but Someone make that make sense to me, right? Those 100 million shares are somewhere, but why aren't they showing up in the numbers? I encourage everyone to vote. That might help, like seeing how many votes are out there, knowing that a big chunk of Europe can't vote, for example. If it's still pretty close to 500 million, knowing that they didn't vote, well, that has to add up to something, right? So hopefully we'll figure all this out. But at the same time, will the short squeeze happen? Is it gonna happen? Is there enough short interest? I don't know. Hopefully it's going to happen. We have all of these apes. Frank Nez did a good article on here just talking about the squeeze being inevitable. I believe it is too. I don't know it, but I believe it is. I believe just with FOMO buying and the way the stock is going right now, we can get up into the hundreds just on that, just on FOMO buying, gamma squeezes, that sort of thing. And then we can get up into the thousands at least for a little bit, right? I don't know if that's hours, days, but I believe it's possible. I'm hoping it's possible <laughs> for my own financial future. I pray it is. I just don't know it. I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. I don't know. But to me, the numbers do make sense. I see the potential there. I see the potential that it might not happen. Who knows, right? Like if these numbers are all legit, there's not naked shorting. Um, the institutional investors have lent those shares out. They'll buy them back at a lower price. We need a lot more price action, but I believe we will. I believe that it's going to go up into the hundreds at least and hopefully into the thousands. And I'll be pretty pumped. You know, I don't know about 100,000 a share. That would be amazing. But, you know, for, if it went up over $1,000 a share, um, that would be some great news for me and my bank account. So I could really use it right now. Anyway, apes, I hope this helped. If it didn't tell me, if it did tell me, leave some comments, leave some questions. If you understand this better than I do and you can explain how this makes sense with the borrowed shares and the total number, that would be great too. Um, have a good one. Enjoy your long weekend and we'll see you soon.